Hi, Obs and Marley. How are you guys doing? I saw some pictures of you guys from SeaWorld. It looks like you guys are having a really good time. Those sharks and dolphins looked really cool. I remember taking your daddy and Uncle Josh to SeaWorld. We had such a good time. I'm glad you guys had a good time too. I have a story here that I thought I'd read to you since it is Mima and Marley Day. I thought I'd send it to you. Maybe you can listen to it before you go to bed. What do you think? Okay, well, let's go. It's called Ordinary Mary's Extraordinary Deed. Ordinary Mary's Extraordinary Deed by Emily Pearson. Do you guys know what ordinary and extraordinary mean? Well, ordinary is just kind of plain. It's just regular. So like if you have regular oatmeal with nothing in it, it's just regular old oatmeal. But if you put apples and cinnamon and stuff in it, then that makes it extraordinary. So it makes it special. So we're going to find out what Mary's special deed was that she did. Ordinary Mary was so very ordinary that you'd never guess she could change the world. This ordinary kid? She did. She changed the world. I wonder what she did. One ordinary day, skipping on her way from her ordinary school to her ordinary house, she passed an ordinary vacant lot filled with ordinary bushes growing ordinary berries. Ordinary blue and juicy, luscious, lovely berries. Hey, Marley, you remember when we went and picked blueberries a couple years ago? Oh my gosh, that was so much fun. We got so hot. But those were some extra special blueberries. Yummy and juicy. Well, Ordinary Mary picked the ordinary berries and brought them in a big brown bowl to Mrs. Bishop's porch. What? Left berries on a, in a big brown bowl on Mrs. Bishop's porch? That sneaky kid, she did. This made Mrs. Bishop very, very happy. So she baked a bunch, a big batch of blueberry muffins and thought of five people who might have brought her those wonderful, beautiful berries, then secretly gave each a plate. How great, five people got a plate. Looking at those yummy muffins she made. One of those five was her paper boy, Billy Parker. And when Billy saw his name on a note in the driveway on a plate, he quickly parked his bike and ate every crumb. Oh, yum, 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 he ate every crumb. This made him so glad that the next five people got their papers on the porch, not in the bushes where he often threw them. In fact, they were handed right to them. Shouldn't throw papers in the bushes, should ya? That's good for him to hand them to him. One of those five was Mr. Stevens, who was so amazed that he smiled for ten hours on the plane, then said to five different people who had heavy bags, Here, let me help you. He still smiled, and they did too. One of those five was Maria, whose cranky little boy James stopped crying when Mr. Stevens played peekaboo with him until their ride came. When he waved goodbye, Maria exclaimed, How strange that a stranger would be so sweet! And the next day, when she was out shopping, once, twice, five times, she did something nice for five different people, five times without stopping. One of those five was Joseph, old and bent and gray, in front of her in line at the produce stand. When he said, I guess I counted wrong. I don't really need those oranges. Little James reached out to him with an orange from their basket, and Maria put a coin in Joseph's hand and said, Here, take this. The oranges are on us. As Joseph shuffled to the bus, his heart was full and his eyes were wet, and his hands did helpful things for the next five people he met. One of those five was Sarah, a college girl who was off to see the world and stopped at Joseph's shop. When her bag broke and her things fell all over the floor, she said, Oh, what will I do? Joseph said, this is for you, and he gave her a new bag woven with his own hands in red and purple and green. 
Oh, thank you, she said. It's the loveliest bag I've ever seen. When Sarah left, she felt sunny as noon, and she just had to shine on five people soon. One of those five was Sophia, whom she met on a boat, looking like the world might end, looking like someone without a friend. Oh my goodness, look at how sad she looks. What beautiful eyes you have, said Sarah, and they're just the color of the flowers in your lovely dress. Yes, said Sophia. <laughs> Let's try that again. Yes, said Sophia. Oh, yes, said Sarah. The beautiful blue eyes shed a happy tear, and when the boat trip was through, Sophia called five people to make them happy, too. One of those five was Tom, her son, the doctor, who was having a very hard day. Hi, she said. I love you, Tom. Well, how great to hear your voice, he sighed. I always need my mom. Dr. Tom was so cheered up that on his next break, he bought a big bunch of bright balloons for five young patients, and he handed them out right then and there. One of those five was Peter, a little boy who went home from the hospital that very day. Gratitude for the big bunch of bright balloons filled him and thrilled him and spilled out of him and onto the next five people who came his way. One of those five was Eric, a teenage boy whose sacks and such were way too much. When one dropped on the sidewalk, Peter stopped his play and rushed right over, saying, Super Wheels to the rescue! While well, Eric, no longer stressed, was very impressed and made a mental note that very afternoon to help five people and do it soon. Looky, his bags fell out all over the ground. And there he comes in the wheelchair. One of those five was Di, his ten-year-old sister, who didn't have many friends and was painfully shy. When Eric said, Hey, sis, want to come to the park and learn how to ride my skateboard? She looked at him, wide-eyed. Serious? she cried. Sure, he said. And because of her brother, Di decided she could maybe, that maybe she could be a friend to five others. Wow. Wonder who she'll pick. One of those five was Louise, a homeless woman who lived under the trees. She could hardly believe her ears when she heard Di say, May my brother and I buy you a hot dog and a drink at that stand over there? Could it be true? Someone actually cared? Cared enough to give her food and a smiley-faced ring that was practically new? Louise was so pleased that she decided that even though she had nothing, she would find five others and give them something. One of those five was Mr. Taylor, who lost his wallet in the park. Louise found it full of fives and tens and twenties. Oh, what she could do with all that money. But she found his name and called his home, and over he came. He was so impressed that she was honest in spite of being poor, that he offered her a job in his store and vowed to do something generous for five people more. Wow, that was really good of her, wasn't it? She was very honest. One of those five was Kate, a woman on vacation, who wanted to see a show she heard was a sensation. Oh, no, she said, it's sold out. But I'm going home tomorrow, and her face filled with sorrow. Mr. Taylor held out his ticket. I live here, he said. I can go any time. Take mine. Kate loved the show and was so touched that, that, she, that she thought buying five presents for five people back home would be really fun. And one of those five presents was a little heart necklace for Mary, her niece. And you should have seen her eyes light up in surprise. Look at her pretty heart necklace. Mary, what? Ordinary Mary? Yes, ordinary Mary's extraordinary deed had come full circle, and on its way it had changed the lives of every person living. You see, when Mrs. Bishop made muffins from Mary's blueberries, not only the paper boy Billy Parker, but the other four people, too, made five people smile, and those five did, too. And after a while, in only 15 days, 
Love was sent to every person everywhere. Just see how it went. See, one person was Mary, and then the next person, well, Mrs. Um, Bishop that she gave the blueberries to, and then she helped five, who helped five, who helped five, all the way down. Look at how big those numbers get. Oh my goodness. Can you count that high? I don't think I can count that high. Well, six billion is even more than all the people on the planet. So after everyone had a share and everybody knew that somebody cared, there was even love left over. All because Mary did one good deed. The world was changed and thousands and millions and billions agreed. It was all because one ordinary day. Ordinary Mary did a perfectly ordinary, stunningly earth-shaking, totally extraordinary deed. Isn't that a good story? I like that story because it teaches us that if we just do one kind thing for somebody each day, we just never know what difference we might make. So my challenge to you is tomorrow when you get up, you see if you can't find something to do. Help um, uh, Grandpa Thomas or help Mom or do something for your sisters or whatever it is, but find one good deed to do and then tell me about it, okay? I love you guys. I hope you have a great day. Sleep tight. Me, Mom, Papa love you. See ya, girls. Bye-bye.